Greetings and salutations, it's me, Colin Moriarty. I hope today's Let's Play finds you very well. Today I wanted to do a brief Let's Play of Resident Evil 2, the Resident Evil 2 remake that had just come out. And we got it early, Chris and I on Sacred Symbols, our PlayStation podcast, got it early, and but not early enough to be able to do a review in a timely fashion or anything. So we're going to talk about it on the next episode of Sacred Symbols, which we're excited about. But I couldn't help but escape in my playthrough with Leon, which I'm still working through. I'm only a few hours into the game right now. But I just couldn't shake with my playthrough with Leon of just how strange he acts and how delirious and del <laughs> he's just totally oblivious to everything that's going on around him. And it's really funny. So I wanted to just show you and see if you guys found it funny too. Because everyone's obviously going to be doing serious and, and you know, horror-filled Let's Plays of this game. Rightfully so. It's super good. I really am enjoying it so far. But Leon Kennedy, bit of a strange cat. So I want to get to that and maybe we can have some laughs together. So I've left the... Subtitles on as you can see because a I can't really hear it because I have the volume really low So it doesn't get picked up on the mic you guys can still hear the volume But obviously the mix is going to stop me from or stop you guys rather from hearing everything So I just kept that on so we can both understand what's going on here and we'll play for a little while And we'll get through everything now I have a little bit of trouble with this gentleman here as we start Leon's little quest his little adventure here in Resident Evil 2 this gentleman this truck driver I always hate when people have to eat on the run. Now, I understand this man's job is to be on the run. He's got things to do. He's got parcels to deliver. He's got packages and not even packages. It could be lumber. could be industrial goods. It could be anything. And he's got to get, well, actually, it's not anything. It's clearly an oil tanker. But he has to go from point A to point B. But can he take some time for himself? Can he take some time at a truck stop to just rest and just have a nice bite to eat and just reflect on the day? Because this is the kind of shit that happens when you're when you're trying to do too many things at once. You're eating a cheeseburger. You're listening to the radio. It sounds like he's listening to like that creepy. Remember that? I think it's still on maybe, but I used to listen to it in the 90s. That it's like AM coast to coast or something. But all the paranormal alien stories and conspiracy theories and stuff. What am I gonna do? All right, so now we finally have Leon. And again, you guys be the judge on if he's as strange as I find him. All right, so he's rolling in here. He puts his blinker on. He literally parks his car and starts putting gas into it. And just imagine, as you're going to see, the scene that he wrote up in. Is he, like, out of his mind? He seems to be, like, looking around like, oh, maybe something's a little weird here. I'm going to pick up the gas nozzle and, and fill it up. And now he realizes no one's around. This is what he drove into. There's a, a cop car with an open door. There's no one anywhere around. This guy is not the sharpest tool in the shed, I'm telling you right now. So we gain control here. It's a little, it's not really a tutorial. It's just kind of teaching you how to move around. But you can see, I mean, it's a dark night out. We don't, you know, I'm just going over here just to show you, you know, he rolls in like this. This is how Leon rolls in. So he rolls in. He's got his headlights on, so it's even brighter. He pulls this way. Now, okay, nothing maybe that unusual yet. But then he pulls left here. And the cop car with the blood in front of it is right here. There's a cop car with an open door on the passenger side, mind you. Blood all over the ground, but Leon gets out of his Jeep and starts filling it up and then realizes that something is wrong. Okay, so now we continue forward into the Mizoil gas station. And by the way, this is 1998, so note the prices. Very accurate to the time. Who can forget? I remember them even being cheaper than this. I remember like 90 cent gallons and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm sounding more and more like an old man. And certainly I sound disgruntled on this Let's Play. There's no doubt about it. So let's go in. Hello? Anybody there? 
Hmm. Something's not right. Okay. Understatement of the century from Leon. He walks in to a gas station with no lights on after there being, let's just remind ourselves, a cop car, no one in it, open door, blood all over the ground, no one else around. He walks in and says something's not right as he finds a flashlight on the ground in front of more blood and products just strewn all over the floor. Okay. This guy's clearly not not dealing with a full deck or he is like amazing at dealing with right. problems. And then he asks this guy if he's all right. Does he look all right? I'll be back for you. Don't move. Okay. We won't. Officer, you need help? Stay back, sir. I got you. And now he's responsible, possibly responsible for this officer's death by distracting him. And he's telling the zombie to get off the way now. I love this. I just love it. It's it's really it's a fun game. I'm not trying to take the piss out of it completely, but it's outrageous. Freeze! I'll shoot! So obviously you want to go for headshots in Resident Evil. Three or four will take them down. They'll revive from time to time, as we'll find out. Now, we got a pervert of some sort. Well, you know, maybe not. I mean, he maybe he just enjoys this, but this is a this is a person who runs this gas station, presumably a male. Put the key in our inventory. That enjoys himself the female form. And uh, he does so uh, rather obviously. Does he take meetings back here? You got a bunch of cigarettes. Almost a half-eaten pizza, some beer. September 1998. All right. Lots of products. I used to work in a deli when I was a kid, so this looks a little bit familiar. Not so much the posters. Actually, the, the boss at my deli worked in, like, this little attic, like, cavern thing. It was very weird, like, above the store. Like, when we used to get paid, we used to have to, like, crawl up there into our little attic and, like, get our envelopes full of money. All right. So this guy's back alive. We're going to want to put him down. Damn it. And that should do the trick. And then we'll walk out. We told this cop not to go anywhere. I looked at his, his head was about half bitten off, but you know, hopefully he hasn't gone anywhere. Oh no. But what's happening? What is this? All right. And then we just grab the key. So we use it. Now, by the way, Resident Evil 2 does a really cool thing. You see the red shit. This is kind of like an instructional thing in a video that's otherwise supposed to be, you know, not serious, but... There's a little red check mark where the key is. It lets you know that you can get rid of things out of your inventory once they've been used entirely. So that's actually kind of neat because inventory space is so essential. So here we just kind of there's a bunch of zombies in here. We don't want, we don't even have the ammo to deal with them. I think that if you try to deal with them, you just die. Anyway, so you want to escape? Herb ice cream, nice little touch. Don't shoot! Get down! <laughs> well, Leon's taking this really well. I mean, he does, he seems like his training. Or he's been a kind of a benefactor of great training, is really what I should say. You all right? Yeah, I think so. Thanks. You can thank me later, when we're safe. Holy shit. Doesn't look like you're going to be safe anytime soon. <laughs> Leon could have just straight up avoided this if he just didn't need gas. And even if he just had the mindfulness, how did he not know? It's outrageous. And now he's stealing the cop car. Thank God that cop car that you didn't notice was there, though. Very careful not to hit any bodies. No zombies were killed there, as far as I could tell. What the hell is going on? I don't know. Hopefully they'll have some answers at the police station. 
Wait, you're a cop? Yeah, Leon Kennedy. You are? Clear. Clear Redfield. You live around here? No. I'm looking for my brother. He's a cop, too. Well, it's a good thing we found each other. I don't know what to expect anymore. He's so awkward. Why is he so awkward? Also, he's driving into the city with a stolen cop car and it's saying you're entering Raccoon City. So that was clearly a rural area outside of the jurisdiction of Raccoon City, you would assume. What are they doing there? I mean, I'm going to have to examine what we have here when we get to this point. But, you know, when we when we get back to the city here, because I'm not really understanding the tethers here. I, I don't really think Leon is thinking this through like everything is a little weird here. I think we can all agree. This intro is really nice, though. You know, this intro reminds me in a weird way, some of it, not all of it. And this is a kind of obscure reference for a lot of you, but some of the shots remind me a lot of the, the art and the key art and some of the scenery in Dead Nation by Housemark, the old PS3 game that came to Vita and PS4 later. Loved that game. What a great twin stick shooter. Back when Housemark was the dominant company I know it can still be. Due to the citywide outbreak, you were advised to take shelter at the Raccoon City Police Station. Free food and medical supplies will be provided to everyone in need. Oh my god, this is so unreal. The police station's not much farther. They'll know something. Yeah, but. What if we're the only ones? What if there's no survivors? No, there's survivors. It's a big city. There has to be. The death toll must be significant, too, because they presumably haven't seen any survivors since they were in the rural areas outside of Raccoon City. Now, I don't know if my instincts are right here that this is a Raccoon City police car. It probably is. I mean, that wouldn't make any sense, right? But I don't know for sure. I want to look. Um, Jesus, God. More like running. Yeah, good call. Oh, Jesus Christ. Leon, you gotta back up. What the? See how these two things come together? The truck driver, at least he's full of cheeseburger. He ate a lot of cheeseburger. Get out now! I can't. Hold on! There's a really funny shot coming up though that actually made me hysterically laugh. I'll, I'll tell. I'll tell you. It's when Leon makes sure that Claire is okay, but the shot they use makes it look like he's just talking to a burning car with like a body presumably in it being incinerated. It's very funny. As you can see, the oil, the gas pouring out of the car. Like a complete inferno. Claire, Claire are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Stay here, it's not safe. Go on ahead. I'll meet you at the station. I'll be there. This is out of control. Everybody, they've all turned. <sighs> there it is, the station. So we're gonna go to the Raccoon Police Department. Leon's uh, a professional. 
I'll give him that. It is weird that all these cop cars are totally unmarked. There's like no logos on them. It's kind of strange. Shut that behind you, won't you? This all seems to happen quite conveniently. It's a little weird. We're not supposed to understand everything yet, but... Hello? Is anybody here? Scene's not looking good here. Some bloody footprints. The creepy statue that you're clearly going to use to solve a puzzle. Doors that are locked with mysterious symbols on them. Ain't nothing right about this scene. You actually need a knife for that. So isn't it a little weird? Like I, you know, it's kind of cool that Resident Evil puts, you know, adventure kind of conventions with action, you know, third person shooting or first person shooting if you're playing Resident Evil Seven. But stuff like this in adventure games always gets me. Like I understand, okay, you need the knife, you need something sharp to cut through this, but you can't just pull that tape off. Leon's incapable of getting into that box without a knife. Okay, if you say so. Also, of course, you use typewriters to uh, save in the game. So, we'll grab that ammo and refill, but... This is 1998. This typewriter is probably from maybe, like, the 40s. So, this raccoon the police department needs more funding. Also, this laptop is pretty old for the time... Old-looking for the time, too. Like, these laptops with the screens that, like, began towards, like, the, you know, first 20% of the plastic instead of the edge. That's, like, an early 90s thing. So it's clear that the, the Raccoon Police Department lacks the proper funding to do its job. Just throwing that out there as well. We'll grab this first aid spray. Reload our gun. Now there's one more funny thing I want to show you. Then I won't spoil too much more of the game. You guys should play it for yourselves. But uh, there's one more thing that I want to show you that made me laugh out loud. Leon Kennedy, complete fucking psychopath that he is. I'll tell you, he's got balls. I mean, like, just think, like, he was just trying to get gas. He was just trying to get gas not hours ago. Okay? Like, he pulled in unawares to the Ms. Oil station to get dollar gallon gasoline. Didn't notice anything was weird about the scene with the blood all over it until it was too late. This guy's having himself a day. Also, I noticed this. Hillary Clinton's missing. As you can see in the upper left there. They call her Chanel Heatherton, but that's... Uh, well, that's Hillary Clinton. You got this. This doesn't seem like it's going to be a safe situation that I'm going to find myself in. Come on, move it. Use those muscles. God's sake. By the way, there's something not good going on over here I want to show you guys, too, in the uh, woman's room. Now, don't, you know, now Leon's not a pervert. He usually wouldn't go into the woman's room, but this is, you know, exceptional circumstances. Now, first of all, let's, we, can we can grab the first ace spray. That's fine. But we're standing in in just toilet water, and why isn't he concerned about it? He's wearing what look like white Nikes, maybe. It's just disgusting that he's just walking in it without even... He just doesn't give a damn, frankly. I mean, this man doesn't seem to care about much of anything. I, I praise him in a, in, a, in a way. You know, ice going through his veins, frankly. This is the first time that he really had to exclaim. This was the this was what really drove him over the edge. Open up! Hurry! Open up! Open this goddamn door! Alright, here we go. I'm gonna wrap it up here, but not before we have one more laugh together, I'll okay? Ah, please! Come here, help me! I got you. Give me your other hand. 
He just told... He tells him to hang in there after liters of blood come at Leon's face and body from this man's torso as he's being torn apart by his... Hang in there. Hang in there, buddy. Jesus, Leon. What a psychopath. Well, that's Resident Evil 2. Just a little sliver of it. I don't want to spoil it too much for you guys out there and gals. Of course, even if you intend on not playing it, it's worth looking at and, and taking a look at for yourself because it's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it so far. And so I hope you do too. But, you know, Leon's a bit nuts. I'm, I haven't played Claire's yet. And I, I didn't play the, Resident, the original Resident Evil 2 or haven't played it since the 90s. So I don't remember anything about it, really. So it's kind of, well, it's like just like playing a new game for me. Just so much stuff I played back in the day I don't remember. So, you know, a lot of you might feel the same way. It's been a long time. It's been like 21 years, I think, or something like that. So, you know. Anyway, I'm getting the hell out of here. I hope you guys enjoy the game. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your support of Collins Last Stand and all things Collins Last Stand. See you next time. Goodbye. Jesus.